Elizabeth Hassagan. And I'm Julia Macchio. <laughs> Thanks good so much for be being here. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I know. It's really good stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Really so, good stuff. Luckily, because Julia is friends with Elisa, she was able to spring into action yes. now that Elisa's home with the baby. And I just love what you've been doing lately. Thank you. But we have to start talking about the Skittles because if you know <laughs> me, you know that that's like pretty much my main food group <laughs> and that feels our morning shell because yes. you know there's no Starbucks open when I go in so when I need something need I something. grab Skittles. So, quick fix. So yes. now you have a secret in with them? Am I going to be able to get a lifetime supply? How does this work? Girl, we could try. We could try. <laughs> I ate so many Skittles during that time period. We were shooting promos for it and we always had boxes in rehearsal. So wow. I've definitely so had like a Skittles, lifetime supply. So you did Skittles, the Broadway musical. This it was is true. Literally, it was titled Skittles Commercial, the Broadway musical. So what Skittles did this year, it was for their, you know, Super Bowl pitch. Instead of doing a 30 second commercial for the big game, they did a one time Broadway musical. Um, we but did an incredible a, cast. Incredible cast. Michael C. Hall from Dexter, um, among many other things, was the star of the show and it included a ton of Broadway people. We just had a great team and it was the most fun I think I've ever had doing anything. It, wow. was, it was just a great experience and I got to be dance captain and it was just so rewarding to get to work with amazing people and it was a one-time thing town hall new york city on super bowl sunday wow we did it that so afternoon. did you see the game or no i well i watched the game you know i <laughs> i watched it with my family you know it was fun but i was i was tired from the day so much adrenaline and you know then i went home and, and watched the game so it was a lot of fun but it was that afternoon we did the show so it was like a one o'clock show 40 minutes musical okay it was a one-time thing now what about flash dance just uh, i don't know that that iconic scene yeah i know that water splash i, know. I mean over did, and over yes. again you must have been like enough already but you know I what know. it so was cool. it was the summertime so i was not complaining <laughs> <laughs> the humidity um but yeah we did it it was right before intermission every show we ended it with the water drop and then i would dry off and get ready for act two but again a super rewarding experience amazing team um we did it at gateway playhouse patch Hog theater actually was the venue that we performed it in but um great people involved so much fun the now, enthusiasm did you travel was great with it as well or you stayed there? i did so i did a tour the national tour back in 2015 2016 so we were on the road for nine months and then I did it for Gateway Playhouse, totally separate team, oh. totally separate thing. It was actually the first regional production of Flashdance the Musical, and I was thankful enough to be a part of it. They came to me and, you know, asked if I wanted to do it. And, you know, you're always hesitant when you're, I was so happy with the work that I did on the road. I was like, I almost don't want to mess with it, but I'm so happy I did it oh, again because it was a great team. And, just an amazing experience. The enthusiasm for the 80s, I mean, you look at Broadway right now and it's so many, you know, pop stars or yes, musicians that yes. have their own shows or you have King Kong is on Broadway now. So right. I feel like people are craving that nostalgia for, you know, that time or just wanting to see things brought to life on a stage that was in film. You know when I felt nostalgia? Yes, uh, this weekend, right? Yeah. So I went to the Islanders game and it was back at the Coliseum and yeah. it was, you know, like the way they were banging, the way the crowd was into it. It yeah. felt like yeah. that old school yes. Islanders yeah. feeling. And you're a big Islander yeah. fan too, I'm right? I'm a huge Islanders fan. Let's go Islanders. Woo! But yeah, I, I love that team and I love the, the energy when you go back to the Coliseum. It's unlike, like it. unlike anything else. I mean, Barclays Center is amazing. It's a great venue. Right. It's clean. They have good food. Clean. <laughs> I'm all about cleanliness. <laughs> but yeah, it's just that nostalgia. Again, it's like it brings people together. It was so great. I was so yeah. excited. We were screaming out of our seats. Yeah, like totally. there was this one controversial call and we had I had gotten it for my husband for Valentine's yeah. Day. So I got Cute. pretty good seats. So we were like right in front of the net. Yeah. And we saw that the goal went in and then they said no goal. And we are screaming, everybody's on their feet. Like yeah. it was like bananas. And you like bond with other people. Yes. Like yeah. you you yeah. like feed off their energy. It and you're was like, so Oh, good. Come on. Yeah, yeah, it's it was, so much fun. That's awesome. Yeah, it was I love really the nice. Islanders. They're Me great. Too. They're so good. Yeah. I also went. Um, we do this special. I'm not sure if you know. I know you watch News 12, but yeah. um, called 12 Making a Difference, and we go okay. out in the community once a month, and we find people who are really changing Long Island lives for the better. Right. And each month we pick one person. Um, so this month was Billy Miller, mm -hmm. and I wasn't really sure what to expect. I had read this lovely note about him and what he was doing, and I talked to him on the phone, so I got to know him like a little bit. Yeah. But we went to this restaurant, and it's called Restoration Long Island in Lindenhurst. Okay. And we walk in, and what they do is you dine for a purpose. 
Okay. So when you get like the drink menu, on the drink menu is information about two Long Island charities and they're also up on like Love a big that. chalkboard. So when the waiter or waitress comes over to tell you like the specials, they also tell you about these special organizations. Oh, that's great. And I love that. And then you I get a that. coin, like a, almost like a pokery type chip. And um, at the end of your meal, you decide where the net profits of your check is going to go. And then they That's present great. these checks to Long Island nonprofits. It's amazing. And I have to say, like, the whole staff had, like, be the change you want to see in the world shirts on. And there's, like, these inspirational phrases around. Oh, I love that. It was so I it love was so that. good. Oh, that's yeah. great. What an amazing thing. And it's just so great to meet, like, the people that are out there really, you know, taking what they, the gifts that they have and, totally. and giving them and sharing them and, you know, making right, lives better. Right, for good, for it's, good. I mean, why not? Do you, I'm all about, I'm all about giving back, so that is incredible. Yeah, wow. so it was really special to be able to do that this week. And we have a lot of really good stuff coming up, including yes. one I'm like a little bit nervous about. We have Patty Morrissey on the show today, and she's going to help <laughs> us tidy up. And she going to help us clean. I don't know. I like, I, I don't, I can't part with anything. They say, like, it has to bring you joy. I'm like, this all brings My me joy. My issue is, like, I, I feel like I go through I try to organize, or you were just talking about giving back, and one a great organization I love is Big Brother Big Sisters, oh, yeah. and I try to donate any clothes or like even old jewelry, jewelry that I don't wear anymore. Um, but I feel like I go through things. I try to do it periodically, and I still don't have room. Yep. I don't know if that's just, I don't know if that's just me. I feel no, like a lot of people I'm have that you. problem. So yeah. I don't know if it's like an organizational thing. I don't know. We're gonna or, find out. But we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. I'm a little nervous, but I'm also excited because I feel like it's necessary. And we're gonna bake. And this yes. is great too because yes. Allie's so here. Excited. And you know, was coincidental, not done on purpose. Not that on when purpose I, at all. <laughs> not planned. It's a disclaimer. Not planned at all. I sent you the information on the show, and I was like, "Oh, we're, we're going to be baking." You sent back, "Okay, well, I just, you know, I'm not going to eat anything because I have some allergies." I have food allergies. All no, my no, people no. out there, I know your pain. Yes. I get it. I get it. Um, and then coincidentally, Allie's here with, you know, allergy-free treats. Yes. So, which I'm so happy that. So exists. whether it's Easter, Passover, something for your class. Yeah. You know, um, she's our girl. So let's get to it. I'm you ready? so excited. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. All right, so we are about to make a sugar cookie. Yes. That hopefully everyone can eat. Yes. So whether it's Easter, Passover, or just, you know, after school we want to indulge, make a good cookie. Little Allie treat. is here as the expert. What we're making is a cookie that is free from gluten, dairy, peanuts, tree nuts, sesame, coconut, legume, pea protein, mustard, fish, crustacean. There's no allergens in it. I'm measuring about three tablespoons of egg replacer. You want to whip this. Now is that the finished product? That's, That's the finished like? product. Okay. It should look like this because it's going to look like a whipped egg. That's okay. the most important part of your of your process is do this first because then you're giving your eggs a chance to congeal. Okay, so congeal. after we do that, what do we need to do? This you is can, special flour. Yes, this is my okay. blend. This is my All own blend. Flour. And if you're wondering what's in my blend, it's a it's a combination of different white rice flours, tapioca starch, and potato starch. Into my flour cup, I'm gonna then scrape off. I'm going to use six cups of cookie flour. Okay. And then I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. Okay. We do not use any kind of white processed sugar. We use natural cane sugar. Two cups of the sugar. Then you're going to use a half a teaspoon of salt. Then you're going to use one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Then you want to use two cups of unsalted butter replacement. We have and then, then taken our dough. When it's finished, we roll it out. We have a tray of unrolled of rolled out dough, but we roll it out on a tray. We put it in the refrigerator. Last thing that we do use is we use hemp milk. Okay. Not cannabis. <laughs> Governor Cuomo. Everybody loves Go Everybody loves Cuomo. Like everyone's first. Governor Cuomo. <laughs> it is not cannabis. It is hemp milk. And there's the finished product. If you want the full recipe or more information, just head to news12.com. Does it spark joy? That seems to be a big question right now. And we're <laughs> heading into that, I guess, spring cleaning time. Yes, so we have yes. the expert, Patty Morrissey, here to help us Thank figure you. out if we can spark joy in all of our ridiculousness that I have in my house <laughs> on my clutter. It doesn't make me happy. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of awareness about the KonMari method, which is a tidying method that was founded by 
Marie Kondo. She's a Japanese organizing consultant. And, and she author. wrote a bunch of books and she has yes. a Netflix, right? Something? Yeah, so she yeah. wrote the book, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up, in 2011. It was translated into English in 2014. And now there's a Netflix show that launched in January. And that's been yeah. great for raising awareness about the method. All right, Absolutely. so you're going to help us all yes. tidy up Long Island. And you're the, you're the person on Long Island to do this, yes. right? You're yes. like the certified. Certified Kanmari consultant. So in order to practice this method, it, uh, there's a certification process. Did they like check all your draws? Is that what it was? I did. <laughs> you have to send it. I did have to submit tidying okay. photos. I was going to say, wow. like an application. And I mean. then you attend a seminar, which uh, or it's the Kanmari consultant certification course. It's actually happening this weekend. Oh, people wow. come from all over the world. There's a wait list of over a thousand people to attend the seminar. Wow, and I okay. teach the seminar alongside oh. Marie. So following the Kanmari method is something to consider a once in a lifetime event. Oh, okay. It's a tidying okay. festival or a tidying marathon. You go through every Aww. single object that you own, only your things. You don't touch anybody else's things. Don't touch my things. <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> and one by one, category by car category, you ask yourself if it sparks joy and you discard the rest. All right, so where do we start? We start with creating a vision. Okay. Mm. So you ask yourself, what would my life look like? How do I want my life to look when I'm done tidying? Yeah. And you can use any tool to get this vision out that you want. It can be overwhelming to think, I'm gonna go through every Everything. item that I own, yeah. really. Uh, but we go category by category, so it breaks it down and makes it a little easier. All right, so step one. We start okay. with clothing. Okay. Great. So this is a typical stack of clothing that you might see in a closet. It's not so messy. Sometimes I'm in, you know, I see it and it's, like this, but yeah. it's thrown yep. over a chair. Right, it's thrown over a chair. Mm -hmm. um, and we make a big mountain yep. of clothing first. So we grab all the clothing out of the closet, out of the drawers. If you have seasonal items that are stored elsewhere, we go around hunting for all the clothes and we bring it all together wow. and we pile it on top of the bed okay. and we make a mountain. And the point of that is a confrontation, a reckoning <laughs> and recognition of how much you have. Yeah. Uh, again, gratitude, abundance, I have a lot. And it helps you see that Perhaps you have more than you need. Okay. And then we go through the pile um, and we learn joy checking. So I'll have you hold an item. Okay. There Thank you, you. And I've got this one. I'm keeping it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm like, are these my size? And you hold it up to your heart. Oh, okay. Okay. And try to get, now these are clothing. These That's are not, not they, mine. they don't belong so, to you. Yeah, but, okay. So you try to, you know, does it spark joy? And what does that feel like? It's much more in your body than it is intellectually. Usually you'll brighten up, you'll, your eyes right, will Right, so if it widen. never fit me right to begin with, but I keep getting mad every time I keep trying it, but I got it on sale, so I have it still in my closet. That would get me out of here, right? Like, is that yeah, not spark joy? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's an opportunity to alleviate any guilt, or you know, you made a mistake, you can acknowledge that. But joy should feel like, <sighs> You know, I'm a excited. breath of fresh air. Yes, a breath okay. of fresh air. Yeah. And if it's not joyful, you know, it's something a little bit like this. So and we yeah. make like a donate pile then? Yes, and make a donate pile. A so, non-joyful pile. So but somebody else will get joy from it. Yeah. Yes. So it's important yeah. to kind of go slow as you're going through clothing. The clothing category is really about learning this joy checking process because you're going to need this skill of joy checking as you go through the rest of your categories. Okay. So if something okay. does not spark joy, this sparks a lot of joy for me. This is where my daughter goes to school. So yes, and I'm very grateful oh. for it. This is a keep. Okay. So then how do you know how to fold it? Is yeah. that, so is that I will important? I will show oh, you how to fold it. Just kidding. And so if it's <laughs> if, if it's if it's a discard, yeah. Then you acknowledge what it was. You know what? I bought you on impulse when it was on sale. It's not something that I really want or need or feel good in. But I'm gonna thank it and recognize, you know, thank you for teaching me that lesson that buying clothes in that situation. Without is not, trying them on first. Is not does ideal. Not work. So I learned that lesson. <laughs> okay. Thank you and goodbye. And you know, donate to. So you do that for all of your clothes? Thank you, yes. Wow. So every okay. single decision that so you're making. So this is like a time thing as well. I mean, this isn't going to be like a day. No. This is going to be. It's a process. It's, it's a commitment. That, so it's kind of, and it's, but it's once in a lifetime. It's okay. not something yeah. that you're going to have to carve out time for forever. The earlier you start, the better. So if you're doing this in your 20s before you have kids mm. and before yeah. you're living with somebody else, you're getting all these lessons in when you're dealing with a, a smaller volume. Okay. Where some of the clients that I'm working with, they have children. Sure. They have elderly parents who have perhaps just passed away and they've inherited all of their things. They've been busy, uh -huh. they have less time and they have a lot more stuff. And it's much more of a dig out okay. kind of situation. But we still, even in that situation, go one item at a time. Okay, so what do we do next? So then we will, the things that do spark joy, let's assume these all spark joy for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are going to properly take care of them. Okay, so we have, I'll show you with a basic t-shirt. 
Now this one has a graphic, so I'm going to fold it in a way that I can see the graphic. I'm going to smooth it out, use my hands kind of like an ironing board. Now these are all things, again, that I love. So the chore of laundry is no longer such a chore because these are things that are giving me energy and making me feel really good. So you like want to take care yes. of them. Mm -hmm. And you're, we're trying to find this rectangle and all the objects, so I'm going to fold it over that way and then fold it over that way, smoothing it out every step of the way. Bring it up, leave a little gap, okay, and then... Oh, oh my God. Doing oh, it so that way and I will be able to see the little design right there. So when my daughter opens her drawers, she can see and pull out like a file exactly what she's looking for. And you really do that after you do your laundry? Yes. True story? Yes. Wow. Are you so, no, and I've actually experimented <laughs> with, like, what's it like to not actually do it? I've, yeah. tr I've tried that that's since being my certified. Right. Looks like. Mine and looks it's, like this one. what happens is yeah. when, <laughs> when you have it all in the drawer, then when, when my daughter or I'm looking for a shirt, then you're right. causing a mess. And then you cause time. the same problem, and then you're like back to square one. Yes. What it's is tough this? to find. <laughs> So these are socks. I and do love you really those. do that? And this is a box that I repurpose from something else. Okay. I really do do this, and it's so easy. Uh, now, and you don't ball them like no, the way so that, when you see. I always do. I know I fold them. When the you ball them, and it stretches wrong. out the elastic. Oh. And it takes up more space. So I just. And when you buy a pair of socks, you'll notice that they're, they're not, not like balled that. like yeah. that, right? You just put them on top <laughs> of each other. That's it. And then in half. And then in half again. Oh wow, that really like is a simple. happy little file. And so That's what, you have this like all inside your drawers, like little boxes yes. and everything goes in a little yes. like cubby little spot? So the wow. t-shirts wow. can go in a big shoe box like this. Wow. Okay. I mean, this could be life changing. I see why people I know. are enamored I like with people this. When they pack, like for vacations, they say it's better if you roll. I do it yeah. for it vacation takes up less space. because I did a story on packing for vacation that involves Ziploc bags and rolling. Yeah. So I always do it <laughs> yeah. because somebody taught me, and I was like, wow, I really can fit so much yeah, more stuff. Totally. But I mean, I feel, I feel embarrassed by my. By I know. My I feel like I'm going to go home and be like, <laughs> There's, 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 so we, probably have time. we probably have time for one more. So can you just show me the junk drawer? How do I tackle that? Because okay. I might have that issue in my life. You've got it. You know. Oh, yes. Okay. I really mean Julia has it, but. <laughs> <laughs> She's so <laughs> me up. So this is. I have a problem, I admit it. <laughs> this is a typical junk drawer. Sure. That we all have. Yep. Or that I, I have. that I used to have in my house. Yeah. Now I'm a recovering messy person. I was okay. on the Today Show about 12 years ago for being messy. Really? And they came in and filled me opening my drawers and it was just a scene worse than this. Wow. Okay. Wow. And so then when we're doing the Kamari process, when you get up to the next category, so you go clothing and then books and then paper and then kimono, which is miscellaneous. Okay. And you do micro categories and then we leave the sentimental to the end. And I'll go around and look for all the junk drawers and we grab it and then we start Sorting. So I've got a notebook there. I've got these little baggies here. This is cute. I've got pens, index cards, post -its. index oh, cards, yeah. business Change. cards. Thank you. Yep, this is a little spark joy. Pretty stamps. stamps. Pink okay, I've got a phone, sharpies, little staples. <laughs> so I put them in categories, or what do I do? Yeah. So we're just categorizing them. We're okay. grouping them together okay. first. Yep. And. All the little details. Now, this is something that can feel tedious, sure. Yeah. But the thoroughness of it is what makes a difference because every single little object, down to a oh, staple. Oh, see, like I put the pencils and the pens and the sharpies together, and you put them apart. All, if you have only one of each, then you can put them together. But <laughs> if you don't, I have six that don't work yes. and one that works, and then there I just keep rotating. I need a manicure, okay. guys. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do. I do too. It's okay. Simplify. Simplify. Yes. It's okay. Take. You can. And look cross how quickly we just did list. that. Like I mean, I know there are three of us, but that was. <laughs> and so Julie, you're coming over after the show. I know. We're looking at the cleaning. So so okay, we great. sort it out. Yeah. And then we use boxes that we've uncovered from the rest of our tidying festival. Mm -hmm. Tidy our tidying festival. To be I mean, that's party. not my usual kind of festival, but There's I think I can get too. into it. Thank I don't you. Know. You're welcome. And Did we'll pretend that this oh, is our staples. Our oh yeah, <laughs> our it. our junk drawer here. Perfect. This down. Okay. And I'll just play around with this. So we've got a notebook there. 
I'm going to put the cards here. We'll That's use this little staples. box. Oh, Set perfect. It. It. It, put, we'll put it, it literally says I'm it. Following directions. We'll put staples in there. Now, this was a box from a Christmas ornament that's no longer needed. Okay, this is, and I've got I'm gonna put coins the in, here. in here. Perfect, there you go. go. And the chain. And you know, the thing is to get everybody in your family yes. though to put oh, things back where they belong here. also. Right? Yes, but when you engage kids in this, yeah. they get really excited, they take ownership. You have to be patient in teaching them, but this is a life skill. So throwing away things behind your kid's back is not the best tactic. <laughs> Wait, would you say that one more time? Yeah. <laughs> Just in case my husband happens to watch this one, what did you say? Throwing your children's things away behind their back or your wife is not the best tactic not to teach someone tactic, a skill. Honey, I love you. So Just focus, right focus on the joy of of, of not throwing out my stuff. Okay. The joy of tidying <laughs> right, up. If you want some more information on Patty and this amazing method yes. and how you can, you know, clean out I your house it. and feel a little more joy, we're gonna have it for you on News12.com. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, a staple. Oh, there.